Thrilled to have everybody here. And uh, I'm Doug Erickson. And and I'm Amanda Rotella with the Two Santa Cruz team with the City Economic Development Department. And we have some new images that we're uh, really digging right now. So I hope you guys. Yes, enjoy. the new and improved. <laughs> but and have... this is our team. Yeah. Go the people ahead. we could not do it without. Um, we've got Doug and myself, and then working behind the scenes tonight, we have Matthew and Adrian. Um, LeBaron, who is part of our team, Emma, Marty, Tom, Sasha, and Autumn. Um, again, we couldn't do it without this group. Can't do it without sponsors either. So uh, I really want to thank, there's so many sponsors. In fact, we have a new one that will be presenting tonight, Life Aid, uh, that you'll hear right off the bat. Um, economic Development, because Amanda's with Economic Development, Amazon, Joby, Looker, University of Santa Cruz, of course, Bay Fed, Santa Cruz County, Polly, Lee, Heck, Harrison, Zoom, TCN, Santa Cruz Local, Santa Cruz Business Council, Monterey Bay Economic Partnership, uh, Care from the Heart, new sponsor, Digital Nest, uh, uh, Wind Capital Management, and Santa Cruz Tech Beat, Cruz IO, uh, Satellite Company, Seaside. Thank you all. We couldn't do this without all of uh, all the support that we're getting. Um, we also need each other. So if you appreciate this event or any of our community services, here's something you should know. We need each other. We are a nonprofit events and news organization, and we rely on people like you during these very puzzling times. So uh, every month member makes us stronger. Every donor helps us deliver the jobs and the skills that we all need for a vibrant tech ecosystem. So please go today to www.santacruzworks.org and join us. Thank you. Some house rules. You want to say them? Yeah, I would love to say the house rules. As we know, I'm the new tech meetup enforcer. So, <laughs> um, so a couple of things to note. You can hear us and see us, but we cannot hear, see, hear not hear or see you. Um, so the best way to interact with us is to use one of two methods. If you have a question, go ahead and use our Q&A box. And if you'd like to just chitter chatter, um, you're welcome to use the chat feature. We just ask that you be kind and respectful in there. And something to note that this webinar is being recorded so you can share it with your friends. You can say, hey, I just attended this awesome event. Check, out, check it out and experiencing it for yourself. Great. A um, couple up, uh, upcoming events I want to make you aware of, uh, June 8th, coming up really fast, uh, Silicon Valley IoT and Blockchain Hackathon. Um, there's well over $5,000 worth of cash prizes, something that you, uh, you might really want to uh, take a look at. We also, on the 17th, two weeks from now, we have the Future of Education, and that includes uh, the VP of Worldwide, Worldwide VP of Education from Microsoft, uh, from Google, Spatial I.O., uh, UCSC's Chancellor Cynthia Larive, um, Ferris Sabbath with uh, Santa Cruz County Schools, and our uh, podcast phenom, um, Michael Sakan, who will be leading a panel discussion with Betsy Corcoran and Jonathan Halloway. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic event. I hope uh, all of you uh, join us for that. And pretty exciting here, on July 1, we have Near a Y'all. Um, with Indistractable's new book. Uh, if any of you happened to see Nir when he came and, and showed his book Hooked uh, several years ago, uh, that was phenomenal. It was the science behind how to make applications um, addictive, uh, if you're a software engineer, how to make it actually addictive, but also how to prevent uh, the harmful effects of too much screen time and and addiction. So um, he's got a new book out, Indistractable. Uh, we really hope that you guys uh, can join us for that. Tonight's program, um, we uh, are going to start with a community announcement. Then we're going um, we're going to go into the winners of UCSC's uh, Idea Hub pitch contest, and uh, and then finally we're going to get into all the jobs that are currently available in the Santa Cruz market. So. Um, with that, I'm going to um, start this out with, uh, we are in unprecedented times, and I feel like I've been saying this for months, eons, maybe even eternity now. Uh, the country has been in lockdown for two and a half months. There's been no school, no work. 
40% of poor Americans have lost their jobs. 36 million are to totally are out of work. COVID has stormed the world. The disease has ravaged black and brown communities disproportionately. And all of the fractures in our society have been laid bare, including economics, uh, education, digital divide, and of course, leadership. So at Santa Cruz Works, we support peaceful protests to address these blatant inequalities and institutionalized racism, and we must do better. So now I would like to introduce to you my two good friends, Ryan and Shanice, who have a really interesting story that I'd love for you guys to hear. Ryan and Shanice. All right. Hi, Doug. Can everyone hear us? Yes. Perfect. I'll take that as a yes. Well, thank you, Doug, uh, for the introduction, and thank you all for the opportunity to share our thoughts and experiences with you all tonight. Uh, Santa Cruz is a beautiful community. Uh, the peaceful protests over the weekend with Chief Meals kneeling alongside the citizens in the march a couple nights ago with, I think, over 4,000 people were obviously powerful messages that change must occur uh, in this country. And for me, uh, you know, as a husband to a beautiful, strong, intelligent Black woman, and soon to be father to a black son, the events of the last week, and even long before that, you know, and long before the Floyd murder in this country, have simply been scary to watch, right? And terrifying to consider in terms of how it might impact my family's lives uh, in the years ahead. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm guilty of, of largely ignoring most of these problems, uh, at least in my actions or the efforts that I have put forward being an active part of the solution, and that must change. Um, what we are witnessing, you know, is a boiling point. It's a demand for action in this country, an emphatic proclamation that how we have addressed issues such as these in the past is no longer going to be acceptable. We all must come together to do better. It must happen, and I think it must happen now. I firmly believe that almost everyone in this country agrees that what happened and what we all saw happen to Mr. Floyd was nothing short of murder. You know, you take away the distractions, the media parades in front of us of riots and looting. And if you really just focus on the simple truth that if you are not white in this country, you are simply not able to live without fear. And that has to change. You know, so where do we start? Uh, we're, I think we start with ourselves, right? We start in our inner circles. You can speak up when you see comments or jokes that are not right. You can speak up when you witness deflection, such as, well, looting isn't protesting, right? That's a, a pretty common one we're all seeing today. You can speak up when you see the spread of misinformation on the internet and on social media. And the challenge I think we must overcome is in every community, it's in every business, it's in every set of friendships, families, and by calling it out when it happens, we can all start to do better together. You know, beyond racism, there's many other challenges we must work to solve in this country. You know, access to opportunity and education to help our lower income communities, especially the youth have access and paths to prosperity. Equal opportunity to turn these skills into promising careers in the industries that will define the future of our world in the years to come, such as those that we're here discussing tonight. You know, and it's very easy to watch the media and see the violence and the crime and to get angry, right? And to pick a side, to assign blame. And that's what further drives the divide in our country. And we need to look above it and collectively ignore it. And I think it's important to realize you know, the windows will be fixed, the walls will be repainted, the corporations who lost inventory will be okay, and those who did commit crimes will be punished. And we can have peace of mind knowing that there's mechanisms in, in place to ensure that all of these things will happen, whether or not we post on social media. So instead, I ask each of us to, to try to channel our emotions and our brain power, our frustration, and come together as one country and one group of citizens to identify, to acknowledge, and to help correct the racial injustices that have lurked in our society long before this past week. 
right? The beautiful thing about technology is that it makes all of this ugliness visible. We all have seen it. I mean, how can we not? And therefore, in our hearts, we all know what must be done to correct it. So respect your fellow men and women. Defend one another against views of hatred or prejudice when you see it, no matter how innocent the intentions. Progress these ideas constantly. Keep them relevant in your mind and actions because we are all one. We're all in this together, and we all need to do better to protect our friends and families of color and all minorities so that everyone has access to equal opportunity and to be able to enjoy the liberties and freedoms of this great nation and to be able to do so, most importantly, without fear. And I just wanted to say a few things from my perspective as a black woman and a soon to be mommy to a black son. Um, obviously, we're all aware of the historic discrimination against people of color obviously the recent tragedies in our country and the violence, as well as the worldwide pandemic, it's really easy to feel overwhelmed and get caught up in just all of the stress of the situations. However, I'm happy to kind of report that I'm feeling more optimistic and hopeful at this time. And that's because I'm seeing more and more of my white friends, my white family members, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, having those tough conversations. They're speaking about race and they're confronting their own personal bias. They're educating themselves on the systemic oppression of people of color. And I think the fact that the conversation has started is a huge step in the right direction. But obviously to enact change, we need to have action. So there's many different ways you can get involved to really be an active part and be an active ally, which is what we need. You can donate to those groups that are supporting social causes such as the ACLU, the NAACP, Black Lives Matter, just to name a few. You can also vote in your local and state elections. As President, Ob President Obama recently pointed out, the elected officials who matter most in reforming police departments and the criminal justice system, they work at the state and local levels. So that's really important. And then most importantly, you've got to commit to being an ally for life. That means educating yourself. There's plenty of resources out there, hundreds of books, documentaries, articles on racism and how to be an anti-racist. And we need to continue to stand together even after the protests end, even after Blackout Tuesday, you must stand with us every single day. Keep those conversations going. We have a long way to go, but with the help of those whose ancestors created these racial disparities, we can absolutely dismantle them. Thank you. That was awesome, you guys. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, you're going to have a baby in like any minute now, I think. So <laughs> you are so close, right? I mean, it's been nine months. We are four weeks away, yes. OK, so um, best of luck with that. And Thank you. Uh, stay healthy, stay amazing, because uh, these, what they don't know is Ryan, uh, the audience doesn't know is that Ryan was uh, formerly a pro hockey player and um, Shanice is like the most insane gymnast out there. So um, <laughs> their kid is going to be unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Thanks, so, thanks sir. Uh, anyway, <laughs> see you guys. Thank you. Bye. All right. Oof, moving. Um, so yeah. let's start now with uh, Matusi. You're gonna, you're up next, so please. Excellent, good, good evening, everybody. Um, Ryan and Shanice, thank you very much for sharing those comments, and Doug, um, and to the Santa Cruz Works team, thank you very much for, for making space um, for, this, for this discussion. Um, I know my comments are supposed to be focused on university things, but I've got a riff for just a moment that, you know, from my experience as a black man growing up in the Midwest, in the Bay Area, um, and spending quite a bit of time in the South, that it's making space for these discussions um, that is just as important as actually having, having those conversations. And we spend all this time talking about how to have the conversations rather than with, uh, with intention making space for the community to unpack the matter at hand. So um, 
big, uh, big props to uh, Santa Cruz Works and uh, thank you, thank you, Doug, for that. So um, shifting into uh, something that's uh, big on the radar of um, our students at UCSE, um, it might uh, kind of pale in scale of what's going on with the world around us. Um, and it's kind of jarring to make the shift from um, Ryan and Shanice's uh, significance. Um, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. So fortunately there's a, since we're virtual, you can't throw anything at me. So I will, uh, I will do that anyhow. Um, for those of you who are not, uh, are not aware, uh, CIED is the innovation hub um, up on campus and really the platform um, that the roots of uh, entrepreneurship and the support base that the university is trying to build for our uh, campus community and um, by uh, kind of extrapolating from there the rest of Santa Cruz is really the support base in trying to formalize and institutionalize a lot of the, the, the network effects that drive successful entrepreneurial environments. Um, my background, I'm a UCSC alum from uh, 20, 25 years ago. Um, spent uh, quite a bit of time gallivanting around the world, launched a company in South Africa, moved back to the States, um, was on the founding team of Alphabet Energy, launched my own startup called Ondaka, um, had, uh, had had a couple exits along the way, and now I'm part of, um, I'm the partner and chief commercial officer of a private equity fund uh, down in Houston and San Antonio called B3. And when UCSC asked me to come back uh, on campus as a, an entrepreneur in residence, um, I thought it was a huge opportunity to help provide some of the structure um, and some of the kind of community benefits and support from my experiences to kind of pay it forward with the rest of our student, uh, with the rest of our student community. So with that, with that background, um, most of the work that we do um, at CIED is around kind of four key areas. One is around um, NSF i -Corps. Um, The other is around uh, today's events we call Idea Hub, the Summer Entrepreneurship Academy, and Blackstone Launchpad. And Blackstone is actually one of the funding mechanisms that helps make um, a lot of the entrepreneurial work on campus happen. Uh, next slide, please. So the events um, through throughout our year are really a, you know, are intentionally following a process to prepare our teams for bigger, better, and more challenging, uh, challenging functions. Um, a lot of this is pitch oriented, a lot of it is fundraise oriented, and a lot of it is really rooted in just the blood, sweat, and tears of, of practice. Um, it's public humiliation, it's making mistakes, correcting those mistakes, and, uh, you know, living, living to fight another day. And that um, as all of you as entrepreneurs understand, is really what it comes down to. It's not just good enough to have a great idea. Um, you gotta have a solid team um, and, you gotta, and you gotta fight. So this, this map here um, is kind of in a typical year, all the things that would normally happen. Um, this year, for obvious reasons, uh, spring semester has been, or spring quarter has been a little bit off kilter. But the point here is that there are a number of structured um, events and functions throughout the year where the EIRs, the entrepreneur and residences on campus in particular, are really trying to groom the next, the next crop of uh, student entrepreneurs that come out of the university. Next slide, please. So two big things here um, for the student uh, participants in Idea Hub. Um, our, I would say our single biggest accomplishment this year has been getting CruiseX off the ground. CruiseX is the social media platform for innovation and entrepreneurship on campus. So this is meant to be kind of like the, you know, it's, it's less the LinkedIn and more the um, idea sharing safe room um, for us to talk about, hey, you know, we went and talked to this VC and they asked me some really shitty questions. Um, so don't trust them. Uh, you know, go, go talk to somebody else. Or, you know, you're looking for these types of referrals with a network, or you need this kind of developer assistance, or you need somebody who's followed this path before. Um, CruiseX is the venue um, where we're trying to nurture that garden um, so that this uh, innovation entrepreneurship ecosystem on campus can become self-sustaining. Self so with, with that in mind, um, what I would like to share, next slide please, um, we had a, a huge day today um, with 
uh, 15 different teams, uh, finalists from this year's uh, student, uh, student entrepreneurship uh, competitions. And um, we also had a huge amount of uh, input from the UCSC alumni uh, community. And that really, I think, shines some light on recent um, initiatives within our own ecosystem to try to actively bring um, alumni entrepreneurs back uh, to, to, to engage uh, with students, both in terms of mentorship um, and in terms of like aggressive feedback on these are the things you got to work on to make this successful. We had five great entrepreneurs um, back uh, this week, particularly for the finals round today. Each one of them has started their own businesses in their own regards. Some of them are uh, community services oriented. Some of them are AR, VR. Some of them are video games. Some of them are drones. Um, the, you know, some of them are financial services. Some of them are health tech. It's, it's awesome to see the variety um, that is our community. And it's something that we don't talk about often. And I think that's super duper important. Um, when I left UCSC, my intention was not to become um, an entrepreneur, to start up my own business. I mean, it never, never even crossed my mind. Um, but then as those things kind of percolated in my mind, I you know, realized, well, you know, if I even had wanted to, where would I have gone? And what would I have done? And the last 20 years along my path, also thinking mistakenly, mind you, that there was nobody else within the UCSC network who understood the things that I was going through. Um, and I was um, a few years back um, accepted into the startup accelerator um, at Stanford called, um, called StartX. And I thought, yeah, I gotta be at StartX to find the people who understand what I'm going through because this entrepreneurship, top flight entrepreneurship um, um, ecosystem doesn't exist in Santa Cruz and doesn't exist at UCSC in particular. And it has been um, really, really empowering the last three months to start finding kind of critical mass, finding this network, building this network, and making it something sustaining. Next slide, please. So the, um, the teams, this is just, uh, just to show you what the teams went through today. It was pitch fest. There were 15 teams ranging from um, fashion to computer vision to e-commerce um, to health and safety. There was a lot going on, and what you're going to see tonight are the finalists from, from those presentations. So Slug Charge, if you would please um, ping in, and Doug and Amanda, if you could find Slug Charge and usher them to the stage, um, we would appreciate it. So we Slug Charge is Jordan's the- mic and, and video. Slug Charge is the uh, third place winner. Um, they're taking home um, a thousand dollars for their efforts and um, this evening um, at the conclusion of the three finalist presentations we will be voting for audience choice awards so stay engaged listen because your input is going to be requested shortly and I will hand over the platform from here. Perfect. So um, I first just want to take a moment and thank Ryan, Shanice, and Matusi for using this platform uh, to bring about positive change. And um, that's something that my team and I are also trying to accomplish with uh, this project. Um, so if we can get to our sl uh, the slides for our project, that's perfect. So I'm Jordan Tam, and I am a part of an electrical and computer engineering team called Slug Charge. Our goal is to serve the homeless community in Santa Cruz by breaking down barriers and obstacles that homeless people face in their daily lives. Uh, we value the need to increase the standard of living for members of the homeless community by connecting them to society with our unique and reliable phone charging stations. Uh, next, next slide, please. Perfect. So the lack of access to reliable power for charging phones literally cuts off the homeless community from society. Society. Like it cuts them off. After surveying 60 homeless people in Santa Cruz, almost all of them reported significant difficulties in finding a reliable source of power for charging phones. Also, staff from two major homeless support centers reported problems in providing homeless people with access to power. You see, like, so just take a step back from experiencing the luxuries of a home, especially during this global pandemic, and put yourselves in the shoes or sometimes lack thereof of a homeless person. Now imagine not being able to contact essential services, and then also imagine not even being able to contact your own family. That's, that's the problem we're dealing with. 
Uh, public disturbances have also been an issue. Our team estimates approximately 90 members of the homeless community using the library to charge their advices. Santa Cruz Library Director Susan Nemitz stated that many of those homeless people have caused significant public disturbances. Uh, furthermore, the city of Santa Cruz estimated that approximately $700,000 in expenditures have been linked to fixing public infrastructure damage between 2015 and 2017 by the homeless community illegally tapping power lines. Uh, next slide, please. So our team researched three major domestic markets on formal power programs for homeless community phone charging. And unfortunately, these projects just haven't been ideal as the kiosks uh, listed in the slide in New York had a problem with public overcrowding. The charging equipment in Berkeley had no theft protection and the charging box in Tulsa just lacked protection and also only allowed for one device to be charged at a given time. Combining this data with our surveys of the homeless community and support centers, specifically our client, uh, the Homeless Garden Project, or our current client, the Homeless Garden Project in Santa Cruz, has given our team criteria for the ideal solution. Um, next slide, please. So the slug charge station, it goes above and beyond in performing under many different criteria. Our system uses solar power, monitors security and components electronically, resists harsh weather conditions, theft and vandalism, and allows for the charging of multiple phones simultaneously while being installed in non-public areas. Uh, next slide, please. So let's get into like the nerdy, uh, nitty gritty stuff. So our charging station uses 495 watt three solar panel array and an MPPT charge controller to generate a high power charge rate for a 12, a 12 volt 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which delivers power for up to six phones simultaneously at a max rate of two amps at five volts. That's fast charging. The backup energy storage allows for 24 phones to be charged completely during a given day without any solar energy input. And on top of that, the station is designed to just withstand a beating, really. The mechanical interface is designed with an in inner enclosure of 316 stainless steel, and the outer enclosure uses polycarbonate plastic, which provides support against vandalism attempts and harsh, non-ideal weather conditions. Uh, meanwhile, the user interface utilizes microcontroller programming to handle all types of interactions uh, and passcode protection, as well as just preempting edge case errors. Uh, next slide, please. Right, so what that means is that this project is also just built for scale. Um, as we have been in contact with another homeless support center called Housing Matters and representatives from the city of Santa Cruz to implement phone charging stations in areas that just don't invoke public concerns. If we look past Santa Cruz though, we can see that our charging stations can also be implemented in thousands of buildings nationwide, such as other support centers, government buildings, public transportation facilities, and maybe even private locations such as gyms. Um, next slide, please. So our team, our team is comprised of myself, Nicholas Hopwood, Jeffrey Lowe, and Aditya Segal. I have experience in power systems and PV simulations. Nick has ex expertise in electromechanics, prototyping, and debugging. Jeffrey has experience in multiple programming languages, microcontrollers, um, and Aditya has worked with integrating circuits to solar PV systems and mechanical equipment. Uh, next slide. So traction wise, our financial model, a model consists of grants, corporate sponsorships, government contracts, and we've just been supported by many, many organizations. Um, our project has garnered significant support as our partners have invested over 500 working hours to date. And in addition, our team has accumulated over $6,000 from crowdfunding and donated equipment and components. Um, I believe our project is really just best summarized by Serge Cagno. He's a consultant for Stepping Up Santa Cruz. And he stated that for homeless people, finding somewhere to charge their phones can be a literal lifeline to crucial support. And that is what we are trying to provide. And that's what we are providing, especially with all the frightening news and the climate that we are currently in. Honestly, now is the best time to prioritize our community. We as a society can really just do better. And we are slug charged and we empower homeless communities with reliable phone charging stations. Thanks. Jordan and slug charge, um, congratulations on a job well done. Um, I know the, 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 the hard work that's gone in um, the, last, uh, the last several months and the last couple of weeks in particular. So um, kudos, kudos to you and your team for a, for a job well done. Doug, let's move on to uh, next slide, please. Our second place uh, finalist for Idea Hub 2020 is Vibrace. Uh, Vibrace has taken home an award of $2,000 for um, 
another another killer idea. Hey, the floor is yours. All right, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming here, and we really appreciate the opportunity to share what we've been working on for this past year. So we're Vibrace, and we we're looking to improve the quality of life for people in the deaf community through the use of assistive technology. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I'm Varun, and I'm an electrical engineering student here at UCSC, and I have a passion for audio technology. And I'm working with my partner, Harjeet, who is a bioelectronic engineer. And we both have a passion for using our skills together to make assistive technology. Next slide, please. So a little bit of background. Um, people that are profoundly deaf are categorized as those that can't hear sounds that are less than around 100 decibels. Now that's about as loud as a motorcycle that's right next to you. Now there's about a million people that fit into this category and we're really targeting the range of hearing loss where people can't hear anything at all. Next slide, please. So currently the devices that are available in the market include things like a bedside fire alarm, which is pretty cool because it vibrates your bed if it detects a fire alarm. Then we have a typical device like the um, smoke detector with the strobe lights, which just has a visual feedback. Then we have a device like the portable doorbell, which is a device you can carry with you and it vibrates when somebody uh, hits a doorbell. Now, the problem with all of these devices is that they all require extensive setup and they only work inside of the home. So what we're really looking to do is to combine the good features in all of these devices and make it into a wearable, portable, assistive uh, tech device. Next slide, please. So that's Vibrace sound detection. It's a wearable universal sound alert device and it has an adjustable sound level detection. So people can decide what level of sound they wanna be notified of, whether it's a really, really loud sound or just uh, maybe it's somebody yelling next to you. It also has fire and smoke alarm detection, which is an important feature because it's bringing our product into the emergency alarm um, detection realm. And this is done through both tactile and visual feedback. Next slide, please. So currently for our prototype, we have the current features tested. We have loud sound detection and we have a wide sound level threshold range so people can have a wide selectivity of the, the sounds that they want to be notified of. And this has an immediate haptic response through vibration. So people will know what's going on in their environment and it'll increase their situational awareness. Then we have emergency sound recognition and we currently have implemented our fire and smoke alarm detection. So this is a way for the user to know that, hey, there's something going on in the environment that you gotta pay attention to. It's a fire alarm or smoke alarm. And this is indicated with the LEDs. Next slide, please. So our path to market um, is social media. We have found that there is a positive response to haptic devices in the use of assistive technology. And, and using an e-commerce website to sell our device is the way we're bringing our product to market. And this is a place where the user can find all of our products and have reviews and, um, and we'll make the, um, the best product that we can for them. Next slide, please. So our product roadmap, we're really looking to expand our product with AI. So we currently have fire and smoke alarm detection, but we wanna add even more sounds to the device. And we're looking to add things like a, a car horn or a glass breaking. So these are all sounds that can be added and this will be done through user accessible firmware updates. So the device can constantly be upgraded and people will just be able to plug it into the computer and access the database of sounds that we're constantly gonna be adding. And we're also constantly enhancing our form factor. So the device is slim, lightweight, and it's gonna be easy to use. Next slide, please. We're Vibrace, Dev Assistive Technology, and we're really looking to make a device that's not only affordable, but helpful to the people that really need it. Thank you. Varun and the Vibrace team, congratulations on a, on a job well done. Um, you guys, um, of, of the winners, I think you guys came the farthest from where you were in terms of being able to share that narrative and your confidence in that expression. So um, big ups to you um, for, for a job well done the last several weeks. It's uh, much appreciated and great to see that progress. All right, thank you.
own the three thousand dollars but the judges today were really really impressed um both in terms of the scope of the thinking um and the immediate applicability uh we actually had a couple of judges saying when a when our bots ready um that there were specific client um referrals that they were ready to that they were ready to make so you made impression with the judges and now it's time for your audience choice pitch ar bot the floor is yours all right so hello everybody my name's logan and i'm excited to show you our bot and demonstrate a better way, our way to improve recycling and boost this industry. But first, let's talk about the problem. Next slide. In 2018, China implemented new restrictions reducing the level of contamination in recyclables that they would accept from the US and other countries from 10 to 15% down to 0.5%. And as you can see in the table, what used to be profitable for decades is now a loss. The problem is that our recycling industry doesn't have the resources to meet the new contamination threshold. It was never designed for it. But this is what needs to be done, and it hasn't happened yet. Let's look at some of the downstream effects of this policy change. Next slide. U.S. Material Recovery Facilities, or MRFs for short, can't find buyers for their bales of recycling. In response, state and local governments across the country are halting their recycling programs and as a result, damaging the environment and creating social injustice. A study done in Chester, Pennsylvania revealed that they were incinerating 3,500 tons of recycling a day, while four in 10 of their own children suffer from asthma, lung cancer is 24% higher, and ovarian cancer is 64% higher relative to state averages. Why? Because no one can sell contaminated recycling anymore. Next slide. Here's a picture of the clean paper waste stream at our local Santa Cruz MRF. If we get the next slide. And this is the problem. The contaminants are still there because the cost of American labor and automation technology is too expensive. But we can and must solve this problem. Next slide. The competitive landscape. This is where industrial automation is falling short. Companies like Zen Robotics and Amp Robotics have de-risked the market by offering automated sorting technology to deal with this com uh, contamination problem. However, this industry falls short when of the 334 MRFs across the country, only a handful of the wealthiest counties can afford to purchase them. The issue with what these two companies and others alike are offering is that their sorting solution caters to their own technology rather than to the client's facility, and it's just too expensive. Next slide. The solution, Arbot, the automated recycling robot. While other companies are redesigning the facility to accommodate for the robot, we design the robot for the facility. The purpose of Arbot is to reduce the contamination level of the failed recycling sold by the MRF, making it more competitive and compliant with today's stricter standards. Arbot is scalable and can be implemented along any existing conveyor belt and more robots can be added according to the MRS needs. Designed to be affordable, costing $2,500, Arbot is the flexible automated sorting solution that MRS want and need in order to meet the new contamination threshold. Let's see how Arbot works. Arbot can lower contamination levels for our clients in three steps. First, detecting and tracking contaminants using computer vision. Second, planning a trajectory to the target and third, removing the contaminant from the belt and sorting it into a bin. Human performance has been proven to negatively impact the productivity, their productivity when multitasking. This is evident in many fields of work, but can be the difference between profit and loss in this industry. Our bot, however, would be able to help meet this contamination threshold by supporting human workers, allowing them to focus on, on sorting items such as cardboard or glass, while our bot handles plastic bottles and cans. So what originally was an impossible task now becomes more manageable and collaborative between robots and humans. Next slide. The impact. Arbot changes the game for the recycling industry. Its effectiveness and its impact can be scaled across the country. MRFs throughout California and the US are consistently reporting contamination levels in their recyclable waste at 15 to 20%. Using a conservative projection, 
the city of Santa Cruz could save about $22,000, California could save a million, and the U.S. could save $4.5 million per year using the RBOT sorting system in their facilities. And this is just contaminated paper. Overall, MRFs are costing uh, recycling programs over a billion dollars per year at the national level. But this doesn't have to be the case. Next slide. Our team is full of talented individuals ready to change recycling. We've had experience in state-of-the-art robotic designs and applications. We have a strong relationship with our local MRF and our multidisciplinary team gives us the versatility to tackle this problem from many different angles. Help us help recycling. Next slide. This is our bot, recycling technology with the user in mind. Thank you. Logan, kudos to you and your team. Your enthusiasm is contagious. The judges um, specifically spoke to um, the tone in your voice, the intonation, the passion that you shared for your project, and that the differentiator um, was, was not just in the technology, but in you and your team. So take that, um, uh, take that to heart. Uh, congratulations on a job well done. And I look forward to continuing to work uh, with you guys in the future. Okay. So that uh, uh, ends the, the phase here and kind of our report out from Idea Hub. If there are just a few takeaways that I might share with other entrepreneurs in uh, the Santa Cruz community, you know, what we've learned from these student groups in the last uh, several weeks is, you know, the importance of your team, um, the importance of your passion, and really sell, is, is being able to sell that idea. So thank you to the UCSC community for your support. Thank you, Doug. And thank you to uh, Chancellor Lareve for being the strongest champion for student success. Um, we couldn't do it without you. And much props. Inspirational. Thanks. Incredible. Yes, thank you so, much. so much. And Motusi, all the work that you did behind to get this going, um, man, uh, I, I, somehow we have to be able to explain it to people who don't realize just how much effort goes into doing what you did, but so appreciated. And um, let's make some new entrepreneurs here. Excellent. So, well, we appreciate ask, your help too. All we're, right. We're going to ask the community now to, uh, to decide who they think was the best. And uh, you guys get to vote, and when you do, uh, the winner will get a $50 certificate to down, what's called downtown dollars, and Amanda can tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, downtown dollars are really this amazing uh, system that the Downtown Association put together. You get a downtown dollar, and that money is usable at, like, a ton of downtown restaurants and retail locations and services. Um, so really the possibilities are endless. Um, so we thought that would be a fun way to just give lots of different choices rather than picking a gift certificate for you. And we encourage you all to, to shop local and downtown dollars are a really great way to get a gift and support your local businesses. And so we're excited to make that the prize this, uh, for this competition. And it looks like, uh... A little over 74% of the people have voted. Wow. That's a pretty high voter turnout. We'll take it. Going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now let's do that in November. Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to close it in about 10 seconds. 10, and 9, 8, <laughs> 6, uh, it's a five, horse race right now. 4, 3, three 2, two one. 1. And the winner is? We're ending. And let's share the results. I wonder who won. Look at that. Slug charge. Slug charge by a nose. Yes. <laughs> the, yeah, just very little, but they actually did. So um, slug charge, we're going to reach out to you with a uh, $50 gift certificate for your whole team. And you can go downtown and have a blast. Yeah, congratulations, slug charge. Really awesome project. And um, yeah, that's where my vote would have gone tonight. So I'm excited that they're, they're taking home the prize. <laughs> awesome. All right, now we've got the other part of our event, the, the Get Hired. This is our fourth annual, and uh, we've got over 200 jobs that are currently um, available in Santa Cruz internships. And uh, there's a few that actual companies that couldn't make it. Looker just was acquired by Google, and they're sorting things out. But um, they do have jobs available. They just couldn't get through the paperwork. So um, 
who's first, I think, is Orion. So, Ryan, please uh, come on. There we are. Come on down, as they would say. All right. Thanks, uh, Doug. Thanks, Santa Cruz Works. And uh, thanks, Idea Hub. Uh, congratulations to the Idea Hub winners. It wasn't too long ago that uh, myself and my business partner were in your shoes. You know, I, uh, my business partner and I are natives to um, Santa Cruz and really building out um, uh, our company in our local community is a big part of our, our mission statement. Here at Life Aid, we make um, vitamins you'll actually enjoy uh, drinking. You know, Santa Cruz has a long lineage of cool, hip lifestyle brands, of course, NHS, Santa Cruz, Bikes, uh, O'Neill's, Adwala. Uh, not too many people know that, but in the U.S., uh, Santa Cruz was the first test market uh, for Red Bull in North America. Um, another thing to point out is yeah, we built this company in 2011 and why that's germane to this discussion is, you know, we were in deep economic recession at that point. And I really do believe that um, if, if used properly, that uh, disruption will create opportunity and opportunity creates progress just like it did for us and really new beginnings for uh, us personally and for, for the team that we've, we've built. Um, one of those other cool uh, brands that have come out of Santa Cruz is CrossFit. And of course, we built FitAid in that CrossFit community. And, uh, and um, so let's just fast forward from FitAid, small niche brand in, in CrossFit gyms. Uh, now we're sold in over 30,000 retailers, uh, not only in North America, but globally in Australia and Europe as well. Uh, which we're really proud of uh, building one of the fastest growing uh, beverage uh, companies uh, this year. Uh, lots of disruption out there with uh, COVID. We, we do, do believe that there's gonna, this presents strong tailwinds for the brand. You can see Immunity Aid is in our lineup and now Immunity Aid is the number one uh, immune boosting ready to drink uh, product uh, in America. So fortunate to have not just one hero ski, but a a platform uh, that we've built. Some of those retailers that we're in, by the way, Walmart, Target, Whole Foods, local, all the local retailers, New Leaf. Um, so uh, proud of what we've built uh, as a brand. And as you can see, just wanted to give you a sneak peek. No one's even seen this on social media, but uh, lower impact for the planet. We are uh, building out our six packs, 100% uh, compostable uh, powder packs to go. We are launching those in a couple of weeks. Um, so be sure to try those when you see them out there on the market. Uh, next slide, please. So a lot of people talk about uh, company culture and uh, being two solopreneurs and not running a company before this. We had kind of a blank canvas to design the company, how really a workplace that we wanted to uh, work at. So, you know, we believe, you know, we're into sports. Um, we believe that through uh, competition and gamification that the best things come. People that treat life as a game uh, tend to succeed. And so we've built a, a strong management process around really gamifying our quarterly and annual goals and OKRs. Yeah, we do the quarterly rewards. We do the annual retreats. We do all the stuff that good uh, corporate stewards uh, should do, but really um, uh, putting your money where your mouth is and, and really uh, living by your core values is what we're all about. And we really have built a strong family, uh, work family uh, around Life Aid. I'm happy to say that um, through all of this, we haven't had to let go uh, one employee. And uh, so we, you know, our mission was to keep no man, no man or woman left behind. And, and we're adhering to that here at Life Aid. So full employment, and we intend uh, that uh, as we uh, work our way out of uh, this pandemic. Next slide, please. So uh, not a ton of visibility in the market. We have um, uh, jobs listed on our website. Those are on pause. We believe in the next month or two, uh, we are going to uh, be rehiring. Uh, important to note, uh, LifeAid, we have about 30 employees that work here in town, down at the uh, Wrigley building. We have about 80 uh, 
uh, employees total across the globe. So here's just uh, a sampling of uh, the 10 um, jobs that we, uh, positions that we have uh, opening up in the next uh, couple of months, but those are all local jobs. Um, next slide. And uh, here's how you can contact us to give us your resumes. Uh, let us know why you want to uh, work with us at, at LifeAid. Um, we're, we're building out the next uh, big lifestyle beverage brand. And uh, we're doing that with the best team, I think, in the business. So thank you, Santa Cruz Works. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, thank Amanda. you. Thank you so much. Um, really exciting to see the opportunities that are happening with your business and your company. All right, up next we have Haley who is with MBEP. All right, hi everybody. Um, thanks to Santa Cruz Works for having me. Um, so I'll quick intro if you're not familiar with the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. Uh, we're a tri-county nonprofit organization that works to really improve the economic and living vitality in our region. Um, and we have different initiatives. We uh, have affordable housing, tech ecosystem and broadband, uh, climate action. But I'm here to talk to you tonight about our workforce initiative. And um, there's a lot that we do. So I have a link in here that you can see all of the work we do in our workforce initiative. But tonight I want to specifically talk to you about our Monterey Bay internships portal. Um, and this is a collaborative uh, site where students from across the region uh, with all the colleges within our region can go find internship opportunities for free and employers are um, able to create accounts and post internship opportunities for free. Um, so next slide. So uh, just a brief overview. Um, I want and I'm not I don't have any internships or jobs to share, but I want to share this portal so that hopefully you as employers who are watching or you as students who are watching can think about how you may use this site. Um, and again, it's all free and accessible for our uh, region. So internships, um, as defined by the National Association of College and Employers, are a form of experiential learning that integrates knowledge and theory developed from the class with practical application and skills development in a professional setting. Um, internships give students the opportunity to gain valuable applied experience and make connections in professional fields as they are considering career paths. And it also gives employers the opportunity to guide and evaluate talent. Um, and so some of the benefits to students, if you're listening in tonight, um, uh, this can help you determine your career path, take the knowledge that you're learning in classes and apply them into the real work setting. Um, you can add these internship experiences and skills that you've learned on your resume. It will help you build um, a professional network and it will help you be competitive in the job market. And studies have shown that students who do internships um, get a higher starting salary um, when they go into a full-time position than students who don't. Um, and students who do paid internships are about 20%, they're gonna get 20% um, higher pay than uh, students who do unpaid internships. Um, so we're hoping that you guys will really think about taking the time while you're still in your, maybe you're in your last um, year of school or fall, this fall will be your last year. Usually students in their junior, senior year um, look for internship opportunities and that can really help you launch your career. And so as we're all kind of working in this remote world now, um, this is also a really good opportunity for students to develop time management and independent skills because you're gonna be working from home um, you know, indefinitely at this point or um, until things, you know, change. So next slide, please. And so uh, for employers, the benefits of having an intern um, is that you can have a pipeline of trained employees. So it's not uncommon to see someone come on as an intern, they finish their uh, studies, graduate, and that company can just bring them on into a full-time um, position. And they've already recruited and trained their um, employees and they now can just are ready to start. Um, it's also just a really good way to mentor students. If you're an employer who has a heart for that or has um, special skill sets that you wanna share. And studies have shown that bringing interns into your workforce actually increases overall productivity um, within the, within the um, work environment. 
It's also a really good way to provide some of your mid-level staff some management opportunities. So they could get their toes wet, uh, you know, managing an intern and you can assess them and see how well they do with that. And that might give you some ideas on ways that um, your staff can um, kind of upskill or learn their supervisor skills. It's also a really good way to engage with the community um, and establish relationships with the colleges. And as we're thinking about remote internships, we want to um, encourage you guys to think about creative and innovative ways that you can now do remote internships. And they rock. So they remove a lot of barriers that students may face, such as location, um, having the physical office space for students to go to, accommodating students' uh, school schedules and their commute time. And there's some tips here that can just guide you as an employer on how you may want to um, put together an a remote internship. And you can go ahead and go to the next slide, my last and final slide. Um, so go to the portal, mbinterns.org. That's where you can access, if you're an employer, you can post your internships for free. It's pretty easy and, and user, um, user, intuitive user interface. And we have an employer toolkit, which is linked here, and I'll share that in the chat as well, that has all the steps that you need to create an internship program. And there's also a webinar that you can watch of me for 45 minutes telling you how to do all of this. So it's super easy, sign up, post your listings, and manage your listings. And most importantly, we need, um, we need employers to indicate that they've been able to hire an intern. So even if you don't hire an intern through our site, but you post it there, please let us know because we want to track and know that impact that employers are making in hiring interns. And as a quick reminder, students, you can apply for free online. So I'm done. Great. Thank you so much, Haley. All right, moving right along onto our next company here, Big Data Federation. We've got Peter, welcome. I cannot start because the whole set stopped. Okay, now we go. Okay. Hello everybody, Peter Walter, uh, fancy title, Vice President of Operations at Big Data Federation. A few words before I start with my slides to Ryan and also uh, others uh, which are involved. Um, my daughter, our daughter is married to an um, African, American African uh, gentleman, very great guy, and we have two uh, grandchildren, uh, seven years and one and half, uh, one half years old. I hope that uh, these children will never experience these television shows and uh, attacks what we see right now in their future. And um, I'm working on it and I know that millions of other people working on it uh, as well. I'm born raised in Germany uh, with a big, big um, history of racism. We got it right there, and um, we will also get it right here with the support of everybody. Okay, these were a um, few sad words. Uh, coming now to the fun part of my speech. Um, Big Data Federation, what we are and what we do. So I had some chance already to talk in private chat rooms uh, earlier. Easily spoken, um, we predict the future of public traded company, the financial future of public traded company. So we are an artificial intelligence driven financial technology company. Uh, since 2015, so I'm one of the, the founder also, we develop and apply innovative machine learning technologies to big data to predict financial and economic financial matrices. These predictions are employed in making automatic short and long-term investment decisions for our funds. So it means we don't have any customer. Everything what we are doing on the signals, we consume by ourselves and we uh, get money back from our funds and our tradings. Basically, we are a team, oh, it was too fast. We are a team of technologists, mathematicians, data scientists, researchers, and software programmers. Now the next slide, please. What are we seeking? So to get our data really digested and our uh, prediction precise and also to other fields, we are looking for senior data scientists as contributors to our predictive analytic platform. Uh, these candidates should be PhD and masters. We, by the way, we hired a bunch of PhD and masters in the past from uh, Santa Cruz uh, University. Okay, 
uh, coming back to so a PhD, a master's degree in the engineering, math, statistics, and or science discipline with two plus years of data science and or uh, machine learning experiences. A strong background, of course, in uh, classical machine learning and deep knowledge in features, selection, regression, classification, and clustering, whatever that else is. Uh, last but not least, hands-on experiences with applied mathematics, for example, linear algebra, probability, and statistics. Next slide and final slide. For more information, feel free to go to our website, bigdatafed.com. Uh, contact me directly, Peter Walter, under uh, peter at bigdatafed.com and or apply also directly to me or to jobs at bigdatafed.com. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. Thank you so much, Peter. Really appreciate you being here with us tonight. All right, SMB Labs, welcome. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jeff Sloboden. I'm the president of s &B Labs and want to thank uh, Santa Cruz Works for allowing us this opportunity to, uh, talk, to, to talk to you about you know, some of the job opportunities that we have at our company and the company itself. Fortunately for us, the COVID uh, experience has been uh, less critical uh, to many companies that we've stayed open during the entire time. And in fact, they are increasing our business, so have different job openings uh, in the marketplace. Smith & Vandiver SMB Labs is a manufacturer of personal care and skin care, and are selling mostly into mass market, private label, et cetera. So the opportunities that we have are, are, are working with larger uh, customers, and uh, doing, next slide please. So, so the company culture, we're, as we said, a 40 year old company. Um, we are family owned, so we're, we're not a big corporate uh, company. The company was founded by two women, Alita Stephen Smith and Lynn Vandiver, so therefore the name Smith and Vandiver. And for all those years being uh, started here in Santa Cruz, we are uh, always taken a, a very natural approach to our product offerings and to our formulary. Um, the jobs that we have, uh, next slide please. The jobs that we have are in uh, marketing uh, with a branded and store brand account manager. Uh, this is working directly with large customers, particularly doing some product development, being a customer advocate, taking the team approach. Uh, we have an opening for a purchasing expediter, working with our purchasing department, uh, you know, analyzing MRP data and being able to help us deliver uh, products in a timely manner. We have a research and development manager position. This would be someone with a science background, potentially in chemistry, uh, wanting to learn more about you know, formulary in the personal care, skin care space. And then the last current opening is a maintenance mechanic working on machinery and equipment. Um, we're in South County in Watsonville. So from a, a traffic standpoint, we don't get you know, if you're living in Monterey or in South County, it's an easy commute. If you're living in North County, it's an easy commute coming south uh, and going home in the evening uh, heading north. Next slide, please. So for more information about our company and the job opportunities, if you'd like to send a resume or contact us um, in Watsonville, the address uh, is there. Also, if you want to learn more information about our company, there are two websites, one sblabs.com and the other one is svnaturally.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. And I will say we are really excited to work with SMB Labs to put together our restart kits for businesses and provide, they were able to um, supply us with quite a bit of hand sanitizer, which was much appreciated by the businesses. So thank you so much for your partnership with that. Up next, we have Joby Aviation. Welcome, Scott. 
Yeah, thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm bummed I'm not able to be there and talk to you all in person, but uh, we'll work through that. So who here has noticed uh, something different while driving around these days? Um, there's a lot less traffic, right? Has anybody ever tried to go down Highway 1, maybe south at 4 o'clock uh, on a weekday? Transformational, right? Uh, it's not a good situation, but from a traffic standpoint, it's, it's wonderful. So how do we get more of that? Like, how do we get more cars off the road and reduce carbon emissions and you know make our planet a better place. That is literally what Jovi is working on. Uh, next slide. Um, so literally we are designing and building an aircraft that holds five people. It's all electric, takes off vertically like a helicopter, flies like an airplane. So it's really efficient vehicle. We're actually designing and building that vehicle here in Santa Cruz and we're going to certify it and we're going to produce it and we're going to literally operate it like an airline. So the business model is the short haul, like air taxi kind of business. So literally imagine pulling at your phone, like you're going to go get an Uber or Lyft. And say you're in downtown Santa Cruz and you want to go to Palo Alto and catch a show. You literally pull your phone, come get me. They might say, hey, I'm going to land right here in this parking structure in downtown Santa Cruz. You'd get in, fly over to Palo Alto. About 10 minutes later, you'd get out just like an Uber, just seamless. That is literally the ecosystem we are building. Uh, go ahead, next slide or next click there, and one more time. Uh, our vision is to save a billion people an hour a day. So it is just a crazy, crazy vision. If you really made, went through all the assumptions and looked at the math, it's millions of aircraft all over the world uh, to accomplish our goal. So it's incredibly grand, and we need the most amazing people to help us accomplish this uh, grand vision. Next slide. So we have some really awesome fans. Uh, most recently, we closed our Series C, and we're just incredibly grateful to have raised um, a good amount of money. And uh, although it's a lot, we're going to need a lot more, and we need to be very careful about how we spend it. So uh, we have uh, we are hiring people, and uh, we're building aircraft, we're moving forward. But uh, you know, we've got to be very careful. We spend our money like it's our last. But uh, the people that have joined our team most recently, Toyota has uh, led our most recent round. It's just phenomenal to have a company like that join our board and be on our team to help us with long-term planning for the production of these vehicles. Uh, Intel Capital, JetBlue, all these investors just bring incredible wealth of knowledge and resources. And so it's just a, it's an incredible team, uh, both in Joby and then also this whole support team. Next slide. So where are we located? Uh, our main headquarters is right here in Santa Cruz proper. Uh, Joe Ben, our founder, um, we have our main office up in the northern part of Santa Cruz, up in the woods, kind of by Bonnie Dune area. Uh, there's uh, really where we kind of build all the composite structures. We do a lot of analysis, structural testing, uh, all the software is written there, um, a, a multitude of things. And then we also uh, do preliminary flight testing up there. In the San Carlos office, up by the San Carlos airport, is the powertrain team. So they develop the battery, they do all the power electronics, the motors, and a lot of other testing as well. And then down in Marina, California, on the airport at Marina, um, we put up these massive buildings. Um, right now, there's a huge uh, hangar going up that's going to house where we do all of our composites, manufacturing of the structures. And then we'll integrate all the components and basically go through all the production types of effort and then uh, flight test those vehicles there as well. So uh, we're all kind of right here in the Santa Cruz area, which is just incredible. Next slide. Uh, the team we have is just incredible. It's just this amazing, eclectic group of individuals, just talent across the entire spectrum. And we all work incredibly hard. It's an intense culture. We're just, you know, we're all here for the reasons that we love. And um, it's like kind of like being a family or fraternity. Like we're all working really hard, but it's also really fun and just a lot of energy. So it's exciting. Uh, and some of you know people that work there. Everybody just has this crazy feel about it. So it's, uh, it's just an incredible place. So we're very, very fortunate. We work really hard to fiercely protect our culture. And so it's, it's important we get really amazing people that fit our culture and continue to help us to grow it and just make it better and better. Next slide. So what are we looking for? So again, we're designing and building this entire vehicle. So it's just literally the whole spectrum of engineering from mechanical, electrical, testing engineers, all the way down to software, software verification, um, go to our website. There's where all the detail is. This is not all the job listings. Uh, IT is growing. We've got a lot of different technicians from composites manufacturing, machine shop structures. Uh, supply chain is an area we're having to start growing now. 
Uh, human resources, we have a senior HR business partner we're looking for, someone to help us really grow and bring in our talent and mentor our teams. Uh, also within finance, just a whole um, cost accounting, CPA. So if you know amazing people, please, please send them our way. Um, next slide, Doug. Um, again, there's our website. And uh, please uh, check things out. Um, sorry, but due to COVID, uh, we're very, very constrained on how we can let people into the facilities and we're just slowly bringing all this up. Uh, we don't have any space for interns this year. I really hope we can change that for next year. Uh, but overall, uh, very exciting stuff and thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate you being here. You bet. All right, up next, we have getvirtual.org. Who do we have from Get Virtual here? Got Toby Corey here, Amanda. How oh, are you? Toby. Hey, Toby. Welcome. Over to you. Okay. Some, uh, some interesting statistics. Um, there are 30 million small businesses here in the United States alone. They employ two thirds of all of the United States employment, and they represent almost half of our GDP. We're in the middle of an epic uh, transformation, a social transformation, which is going to change. Consumer, the way consumers buy, the way we business. And 70% uh, of our GDP is driven from consumer spending. And small local businesses, which make up the fabric of America, of our communities, they employ so many people. They uh, contribute, they donate to all of our worthy causes. And uh, so, virtual.org does it gives local businesses affected by COVID 19 the tools to adapt to the virtual landscape and extend their businesses. Anyone that thinks that we're gonna return back to pre-COVID normal, uh, I think you're in for a rude awakening. Consumer behavior is changing right as we speak today. And the vaccine's still fairly far away. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do to help these businesses extend themselves online so they can the great products and services that they provide to all of our co communities. So, Get Virtual uh, was created starting out with actually creating a course at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Uh, businesses can go to getvirtual.org. They can sign up for the service. So what local businesses get, they get uh, volunteers, students get college credit um, while they're giving back to their community. We provide a basic set of services that largely can 80% of the requests that we're getting. So we're able to create basic websites. Many businesses either don't have a website or it's very inadequate. We use technologies like Squarespace, WordPress, and Weebly. We're able to extend the capabilities of those websites through a myriad of different plugins from scheduling virtual appointments with a lot of getting businesses online with e-commerce services through Shopify and other services. We help with payment, we help with delivery, we help with marketing campaigns. Um, to basically with all off the shelf SaaS products, there's no programming. And our focus here is really helping small businesses get it and fish. They can maintain, they can extend online and be where their customers are. Um, to date, we've 80 sign up. Uh, unfortunately, we have more demand than we have bandwidth. The good news is that this first batch of students out of UCSC were 15 projects getting these businesses that many of them had zero revenue, or even those that were essential that uh, saw their revenue impact. So um, the other great news is that uh, UCSC has created a summer course and a fall course. And uh, so we hands-on entrepreneurship training for any student or volunteer that wants to sign up for the program. You're going to interact directly with all the owners and help them really understand how to, how to navigate and extend their business online. And the most cool, stunning thing is that Get Virtual is gonna be rolling out worldwide the beginning of the summer. I've set an audacious goal for the group that with a year from now, we'll have over 100 colleges signed up, 25 interested colleges today. Uh, CSU Monterey Bay is rolling out their summer course this summer. And it provides just an amazing program where you can help from students who have grown and lived a digital lifestyle, combined with a small business owner's expertise in their market, their products and customers, as just an amazing program to see the students giving back, delivering incredible value to these businesses, and the appreciation of small businesses has been just incredibly heartwarming. So, next slide. 
I want to end with, uh, we're looking for volunteers. We're, we're UCSC students. Um, if you have the inclination or desire, all you do is go to getvirtual.org. Go to the sign up page. You can sign up to volunteer. If you're a small business today, we're happy to take your call and we're getting ready to launch our, our second program this summer in about three weeks. But I just really want to acknowledge the people who are impossible. So Nana Mukovic, who is a longtime instructor at UCSC, also an instructor at Stanford. She had in conviction to get this program created. Um, I owe everything to her. And I want to acknowledge the amazing students that with just very, just giving them kind of directional focus, they have stepped up and provided so much value to so many businesses here locally in Santa Cruz. You, Aunt Ananya, Smeet, Gideon, Aaron, and Aaron, and Anaga, and Stryker, and uh, Nikki. Um, this team has done the most amazing work. So I tip my cap to them. I tip my cap to the Santa Cruz community. Um, and website, sign up, and uh, we're going to get through this. That's it, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. This is really a, uh, such an exciting project, and um, it's really, I know you've already been able to help so many of our small businesses um, sort of pivot in this new um, sort of new situation we all are finding ourselves in. So thank you so much for all of your work and thank you to your team. This is really amazing. Thank you so much. All right, up next. All right, we have the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, and I believe we have Brandon here with us today. Brandon? Oh, can you hear me? Ah, there we go. Yep, you're up. All right. Okay. Um, apologies. Here we go. Uh, so my name is Brandon Apley. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center here in Santa Cruz. We've been here for about 35 years serving uh, all types of small businesses throughout the whole county. Uh, traditionally, we serve anywhere from four to 500 businesses um, and help to start about uh, 40 to 50 businesses every year. Next slide. So we've got a, a great uh, team uh, of different advisors, anything from typical strategy and business to HR, marketing, um, IP law, uh, parts of IT, uh, subject matter experts in restaurants and retail. Um, we're also building out our ag team and our IT team um, and looking at uh, new disciplines as well. Uh, next slide. We have a fantastic culture of those that are really looking to benefit our local small business community. Um, this goes anywhere, again, from your the businesses that a lot of us have visited and loved, Humble Sea being one of them, to the ag and farmers that um, produce our food, um, to the shops that we go down and shop um, uh, on Main Street. Uh, it produces a, an amazing culture. Um, many of our, uh, our advisors are actually volunteers, but we do obviously pay uh, our advisors as well to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting as well as group training. Next slide. So as far as the jobs we have that we're looking for, the skill sets right now, we're um, really looking for those that have uh, a background in providing a digital presence uh, for businesses, uh, access to capital, as well as operations. Um, additionally, we're looking for um, Spanish speakers uh, and, and any, um, anyone that has uh, startup experience uh, here in Santa Cruz. Next slide. And, uh, as far as next steps, uh, I would love to um, connect. The easiest way to connect with me is uh, email. Uh, and so you can just uh, shoot me a quick email, brandon.napoli at cabrillo.edu. Happy to have a conversation and see how we could uh, work together. Thank you so much, Brandon. Really, the SBDC is um, one of our best partners here in the community. They provide so much support, one-on-one um, -on -one business consulting, 
um, and really provide so many resources to our, our business and workforce community. So they're a really great organization to be a part of and I encourage you to reach out and get involved. All right, up next we have the Digital Nest. Welcome. Hello, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jimena and I am the Senior Manager of HR and Operations at the Digital Nest. Uh, for those of you that have never heard of us, uh, we are a career development center that offers trainings in digital media, web and IT, and leadership skills to youth in Watsonville and Salinas. Next slide, please. So why join the Digital Nest? At the Nest, we're not only dedicated to ongoing growth and development of our youth and our communities, but we are also actively uh, active in the development and growth of our team members. Uh, we value a growth mindset, uh, co-creation, and acting from a place of love, um, all while having fun. Uh, so if you are interested in growing with us, I encourage you to apply. Next slide, please. So currently we have four open positions. Um, we're looking for an administrative assistant in accounting and development. We're also looking for a systems and IT administrator. Uh, we're also looking for two educational specialists, one for computer information systems and the other for soft skills building. Next slide, please. So if any of these sound of interest to you, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email's there, our phone number's right there, and our website is also there. So if you wanna go explore more about what the Digital Nest is about, feel free to do that. Um, just a side note, we are a nonprofit, so we always encourage people to volunteer with us as well. So thank you, that's it for me. Thank you, Jimena, appreciate you being here with us. And yeah, just another really rock star organization in our community. They've got a really amazing team. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I second my um, encouragement for you to check them out and, and to join their team. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right, Santa Cruz County Bank, welcome. Hi, thanks for having us here. I'm excited to present to everybody. Um, I'm Brianna Caraba, I'm the HR manager here at Santa Cruz County Bank. And um, if you're not familiar with Santa Cruz County Bank, we're um, locally, founded and based here in Santa Cruz. And we recently merged with Lighthouse Bank. So we really took two of the powerhouse local banks in Santa Cruz and combined them into an even larger organization. And um, we both banks were founded really based on service to the community and support to the community. And how do we do that? We do that by utilizing those deposits from local individuals and local businesses. We invest them into the community in the form of loans we invest them in the form of donations and we invest them in the form of our team being out there and participating um, at local nonprofits and supporting wherever we can. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We have uh, seven locations currently. We're located uh, in Santa Cruz County from Watsonville to Scotts Valley. We also have a location in Cupertino and we recently announced we are expanding into Monterey County. So we have a lot of exciting things going on here and we're expanding and we're looking to grow our team. Next slide, please. So what does it mean to be a community bank? We feel really strongly about this. Our support to the community, like I mentioned, in the form of loans, in the form of support, um, we separate ourselves from the big banks. Obviously we provide, we strive to provide personalized service and the best customer service, but really showing up for the community. And um, a good example of that is in this COVID pandemic, um, when faced with local businesses closing down and having to not be able to pay their employees our team, uh, which we're an essential employer, so we've actually never closed down the whole time. Um, we had to shift some of our business practices and send more people off site. But um, during this pandemic with the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, our team developed, was one of the leaders in developing an online application through our website. We were taking applications before the program was even live. We had our team working through the night and um, we made, several 
loans out there in the community and actually, you know, if you equate it to the number of jobs saved, it was about 30,000 uh, jobs that we were able to provide that paycheck protection for. So that's just one way that our company shows up for the community. Um, also, we're nationally recognized. We have all of those um, distinguishing titles, but really this is something that just made us so proud the way that everybody stepped up and came through. Next slide, please. And our commitment to the community, again, in the form of volunteerism, we support our employees being in the community. We provide 40 hours a year of community service time. So we really want everybody to our team to get behind it. Um, we show up at as many events as we can, and we hope that soon we'll be back to normal where we can physically show up to events in mass again. Um, and so next slide, please. And then we have several opportunities available. We have opportunities that are traditional banking, that are customer service facing. Uh, we have tellers and new accounts, everything from loan officers and loan underwriters. We're also hiring for internal support. We have an HR generalist position open, a training specialist, so you would support our internal teams and train on products and services. A project manager because we're rolling out, um, we have initiatives to roll out some new products and services, so you would help coordinate that. We have IT uh, growth, so we have a help desk support, and then we also have a security architect, which is a new position, so that's kind of exciting. Somebody to focus on the security of the network, which is obviously very important in the business that we're in. So if you're interested, I encourage you to check out our website. There are job descriptions listed there. And uh, my contact information is there as well. So you can send your resume in either way. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, I mean, banking local and, have, and our local banks, really the, the ripple effect, you can see the amount of community hours that they're putting in but, and just the ripple effect of what happens when you um, invest your money locally, you put money into your local bank. So yeah, I really encourage you all to, to join the um, Santa Cruz County Bank team. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. All right, up next we have Amazon and I believe we have Mike with us here. Um, no, this is John Nelson. Um, sorry, oh, yay. Wonderful. All right, John, you're up. Cool. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, representing Amazon uh, in specific my team, which is uh, Alexa for everyone. Uh, if you didn't know, Amazon, we have uh, two floors uh, on the third and fourth floor of the Cooper building right above the O'Neill's uh, surf shop uh, next to Abbott Square. Uh, although we've all been working from home for most of the time uh, due, to, due to COVID, hopefully we can get back in uh, soon. I really liked working downtown. Uh, uh, it's just great to walk along the river and everything. Uh, I, I kind of miss that, but uh, I am working from my own home, as you can see here. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, so I work for a team called Alexa for Everyone, and what we do is we look at opportunities that Alexa has to help customers who have disabilities and either provide uh, fill in gaps in what Alexa can do or provide new technology to help uh, special cases. So for example, um, we, we've, of the, we've shipped three main projects in the last uh, couple of years. Um, we've had Alexa captions, which displays what Alexa is saying onto uh, devices that have screens. Uh, we have tap to Alexa, which allows people who can't speak or whose voice Alexa doesn't understand to interact with Alexa via a keyboard and some shortcuts. Uh, and that's also on every device that has a screen that Amazon sells. And then finally, we shipped something uh, late last year called Show and Tell. And this is a product that uh, customers who are blind or have low vision can use in their kitchens to identify uh, pantry items. Uh, you can ask Alexa, what am I holding? And she'll return uh, you know, uh, an identification of what you're holding. Uh, you know, whether you're holding a can of beans or a can of carrots is really important for your recipe. So uh, we try to, that's kind of the use case that we're trying to solve with that. Um, and then he's pictured here is just a number of like uh, booths and conferences we go to and kind of uh, learnings, uh, 
teaching sessions we do within Alexa as well. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm looking for is software and development engineers, uh, Android developers and server side engineers uh, based out of Santa Cruz. Uh, you can contact me, uh, here's my contact information uh, and I can uh, uh, forward you on to my jobs. Uh, also uh, Amazon's whole, uh, hiring in a lot of different places, uh, a lot over the hill, but also uh, some other positions in Santa Cruz. So if you look on uh, the Amazon job site, uh, then uh, uh, any you have any questions about those jobs, you can contact me as well and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for uh, letting me speak. Uh, Great, thank you so much, John. And we're really excited to have um, you and your team here in Santa Cruz. Well, thank you. All right, so we're moving right along and we've got Care from the Heart. We have our speaker from Care from the Heart on. No, maybe not. I'm not seeing her and she, it. Can you hear me now? Yes, oh, there we, we are. Great. Are you able to see me also? No. <laughs> my video? Are we good? There we are. Yeah. There we are. I, hello, this is Jackie with Care from the Heart. And before I give my spiel, I'd like to really express my gratitude to you, Amanda, and also to Doug from Santa Cruz Works for bringing the community together. It's awesome to regroup tonight. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Beautiful. Let us know okay. when you want us to push a slide. Okay, so uh, can you put on the first slide, please? So my name is Jackie Tucker. I am the owner. My husband and I own Care from the Heart. We are a medical and non-medical home care service here in Santa Cruz and the agency was established in 1995. We provide a variety of caregiving services um, with people with many different individualized needs due to a stroke, a heart attack, uh, recovering from a surgery, pre-op, post-op, and sometimes it's companionship or walking the dog. So we provide, like I said, a variety of services. What I like to really present to you is um, caregiving and nursing is very rewarding. Some of our families that we care for uh, lack the skills on how to care for the loved one at their bedside, uh, such as hospice care uh, at the basic level. So uh, in working for Care from the Heart, it is on the job training and you would be paid between 16 to 17 an hour approximately. Uh, and we do have benefits and 401k, uh, paid vacation, paid sick time. Um, but going back to being at the bedside of a loved one, um, it will prepare you emotionally how to be present and be able to be of assistance to your loved one in need who may be recovering from an illness such as cancer or Parkinson's. Um, so there is the gift there because once you learn that skill set, then it's definitely there to uh, acknowledge those needs. Um, so here at the slide, meet the team. We have case managers, nurses, and also care providers that are certified. Uh, some care providers have been with Care from the Heart after 20 years. And uh, when you come and apply, if you have no experience, like I said, you will be paid on the job training. You will also be teamed up with a care provider that will uh, kind of train you and show you some skills for approximately 10 hours along with the nurses that are available to mentor the person that's interested in working as a care provider. Um, next slide, please. So this is a wonderful uh, picture from uh, a former employee of ours and also a former client of ours. Um, and uh, this was taken at a house here in Santa Cruz. And what are the requirements? Please, the kindness, the respect, and we like to uh, emphasize that we care for our wonderful patients and clients and residents in our community as though they were families, uh, members of our own family. Um, and um, that's something that's heartfelt and uh, the care is delivered always with care. Um, I am also looking for a human resource manager and she would be working with our staff. Uh, this position does have an assistant, an assistant manager, and we have approximately 100 employees on board. 
and the care coordinator position, you will be working closely with the nurses in um, assessing and coordinating the care for some of our patients, as well as um, doing some training with our care providers. Next slide, please. Uh, this is my husband and I. Uh, I'm married to a firefighter. The agency was established in 1995, like I said earlier. We are a mom and pop store where we provide great, great uh, assistance to our community uh, with love and respect and determination. Please do go on the website and that is carefromtheheart.net. You could apply online if you like. And lastly, I'd like to leave you with a Jackie Robinson's a quote, which is very dear to my heart. And it says something like this, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. And you, Doug and Amanda, you're a wonderful example of doing this and practicing this principle on a daily basis. I wanna thank you very much for letting me part of being part of this wonderful Zoom meeting. And I do encourage this wonderful students to come and apply. You can see the office is located, but the office address, which is located by Dominican Hospital. And uh, you're welcome to call us if you want to come in and set up an interview. Big hug and thanks again. Thank you so much. Um, this is just really such an amazing event. I'm feeling so inspired that by the fact that we have so many jobs and people, so many um, organizations and companies that are still hiring. So appreciate you being here with us and uh yeah what an exciting thing to see all of these opportunities and and so good to have jackie with uh, the the services that you're providing there so thank you and thank you for sponsoring this event i'm on well we're at the end of our uh very long session we're sorry it took oh, uh, much longer than we thought um, again if you like to support us please go and do that and uh, we wanted to say that this event, the credits, produced by produced by Doug Erickson and Mot Motosi Paul, co-hosted by Amanda, project management by Matthew Swinnerton and Adrian. Oh gosh, I'm going to butcher your last name. <laughs> it's a lot to. So get. <laughs> well, hey, you did the theme music here, so that's that's good. And of course, we're inspired by Santa inspired by Santa Cruz. Cruz. Yes, yes, we are. So all of you, uh, go out there, be the change you want to see in the world. Be sure to join us on June seventeenth for the future of education. Yes. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. <laughs>